Hello there. I promise you're not having deja vu. We have done VLANs already, but I need to tell you a little bit more about the trunk ports. Yes, I forgot to include this in module 12. So consider this module 12.5, where we're going to talk about what makes a VLAN trunk port work properly. So picking up from a point in module 12, where we spoke about setting out the trunk ports, and that trunk ports will carry all specified VLAN traffic that has already been tagged. Well, for the trunk ports to do this, they're going to have a VLAN that they are a member of. This VLAN is either going to be called the native VLAN, the default VLAN, or the designated VLAN, depending on which network vendor you're talking about. But its goal is to carry the other VLAN traffic. So when traffic arrives on those access switches and those access ports apply a tag, that traffic travels across the trunk port with its tag or label on it. Now, for that to happen, this default VLAN that we use between the trunk ports, or this native VLAN, whichever term you prefer, is going to be the thing that carries that traffic. So you can consider it some sort of transport VLAN. Now, the traffic on the trunk's VLAN can travel through it untagged, and any untagged traffic that travels through a trunk is assumed to belong to this. So if I were to make those trunk ports use VLAN 5, for example, any traffic for VLAN 5 actually is allowed to travel across the trunk port without a tag on it. And when it gets to the other side, that trunk port will assume that traffic belongs to VLAN 5. But for VLANs 10, 20, and 30, they will have to travel across the trunk port with a tag, which is one of the reasons why we said in the previous video that the traffic will be allowed through if it's specified as an allowed VLAN. Now, to give a bit of an analogy for this, you can consider the trunk port's VLAN to work a little bit like this. We're going to have the two switches with trunk ports on each side. And let's say we've got VLAN 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, and 60. Now, those VLANs will be allowed to travel across the trunk as long as they are tagged. But if I set the trunk port to use VLAN 5, it's going to allow VLAN 5 through without its tag. But VLAN 5 is also going to be carrying the traffic for VLAN 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, and 60. It's sort of like saying, okay, if VLANs 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, and 60 are a bunch of cars, and they are currently on the switch on the left there, which is the factory where the car is being made, and we want to move these cars to a dealership, we are not going to drive those cars all the way to the dealership. We're going to put them on the back of a transport truck. That transport truck is like VLAN 5. And when we load all those cars onto the back of the transport truck, those cars are going to be cargo. They're going to be on a shipping manifest. They're going to be listed as something that needs to be shipped from point A to point B. Now, we can comfortably move those cars from the factory to the dealership where they're going to get sold without putting any extra mileage on them. So the new buyer gets to be the first person to put the hundred, the first thousand, the first whatever on the clock. So taking the analogy back to the VLANs, VLANs 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, and 60 are access VLANs that have to travel across tagged, and they will be listed as cargo for VLAN 5, which is going to carry them across this trunk link. Now, I went and specified VLAN 5 as the default or native VLAN for the trunk ports, but if I had not done that, defaults apply. And you'll recall in the previous video, I said that the default VLAN that all interfaces belong to is VLAN 1. So if we don't specify it, VLAN 1 will be the default for the trunk. Now, whether or not that's a good idea for security, I'll leave that up to another course. But let me give you the little short answer there. It's not the greatest thing. It's normally good practice to use any other VLAN besides VLAN 1 for trunk services. But otherwise, that is all I need to tell you about the trunk port and its default native or designated VLAN. Hope you found that useful. And apologies that I didn't include that in the previous video. I don't know why it slipped my mind while I was creating that. Nonetheless, though, hopefully you got something out of that. And I'd like to say thank you for watching. I appreciate it. And if you have any friends, family members, peers, colleagues, etc., who are also interested in Network Plus, don't be afraid to share this video with them. Otherwise, I'll catch you in the next video.